by Riverside. Welcome to Dance Talk with Joanne Carey, where the dance world connects, the conversations inspire, and where we are keeping them real. I'm your host, Joanne Carey, and today I'm joined with Alicia Grafmack. Alicia is the Dean and Director of the Dance Division at Juilliard. She was also recently recognized and honored by the Dance Magazine Awards. She's a dancer, a choreographer, a teacher, a mentor, a mother, and did I say podcast host? Welcome, Alicia, to Dance Talk. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, yes. You know, I'm really delighted to be able to um, share with my listeners and, and dance listeners worldwide about you, about your career, about what you're doing at Juilliard, the recent award you just received. I mean, just really telling everybody about, about who you are. So can you just give everybody a little bit of a background about um, who you are and how you got started in dance. Uh, sure. Well, I'm originally from Columbia, Maryland, and I grew up immersed in all things dance. I think I came out of the womb dancing. My mom recognized that I had a knack for movement. I love to make up dances at home. She would have me perform in the living room for family and friends. And by the time I was two and a half, I was already in a creative movement sort of class and it just stuck. It was something that was so natural for me. And I was really lucky to find incredible teachers that grew that love, that uh, really emphasized creativity and imagination and musicality and all the technical things kind of just fell into place with a lot of hard work, obviously. Uh, by the time I was nine, I identified that I wanted to be a classical ballerina. And by the time I was 11, I found, or maybe she found me, I'm not really sure, a woman named Donna Pidel, who originally was teaching at Kinetics Dance Theater, where I was training. And then she started her own school called Ballet Royale Academy in Maryland, Columbia, Maryland. And so I went and trained with her. She asked me, do you want to be a professional dancer? And of course, at 11, you don't know what that really entails. And I said, there's nothing more that I want to do than pursue this for my life. And she said, do you know how much sacrifice it's going to take and hard work it takes? And of course, you don't know at 11, but you just say, yes, I'm ready. Yep. And we trained together uh, with the idea of becoming a professional dancer uh, out of high school. So I participated in various summer programs at School of American Ballet and American Ballet Theater. And I did a couple uh, international competitions. And when I was 17, in my senior year, I was invited to take company class at Dance State of Harlem. And Arthur Mitchell was there. He was teaching the class. And that started my journey he uh, at first offered me a apprentice contract in my senior year, and I ended up moving to New York City in the spring semester of my senior year and starting my career under Arthur Mitchell, which is amazing because, wow. yeah, growing up, I knew who he was. I knew Dance of Harlem. I had posters of, of uh, Virginia Johnson. Sylvie Guillaume and uh, Cynthia Gregory in my room. Uh, those were the people who I aspired to be like. Give me and goosebumps. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, I mean, what, what an amazing and rich background you have at such an, a young age. And mm -hmm. I, I like to point that out because what a gift in that mentor you had. To, take, to ask you at 11, when I think of the 11 year old that I've taught, or, or at the nine year old, what, like you're saying, when you knew that's what you wanted to do. And, and she had that foresight to, to take you to, under her wing and to really guide you. I think that's so, so important. And what a, what a gift and a blessing to be able to have somebody like that at such an early age 
to do that for you. Um, so really, uh, kudos to her. Is she yes. still in your life? Is she still around? Yes, she's still in, in my life. Uh, she no longer has a dance studio. She's doing other amazing things for the world. Uh, but we're still very much connected. She still lives in Maryland. And, you know, a, a there are so many things that she did for me and for a lot of other dancers who it was a small school, but we, we ended up many of us working in the field, which is amazing coming from a small school, how many people ended up making dance their profession. But she also not only introduced us to a professional high quality education in dance, but also a very diverse education in dance. So uh, I concentrated in classical ballet, but we also took jazz and we took, there was no hip hop at the time. <laughs> I'm aging myself, yeah. but uh, we took jazz and we took, yeah, character and all different types of modern dance. And we would come up, we would drive up to New York on the weekends and I would take ballet class, but also take jazz with Frank Hatchett and uh, do street jazz dancing and like, I just had a love for dance in general and I don't I think that the way that I was trained is so unique now looking back and it prepared me for all the other facets of my dance career as well. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. So many things that you're saying parallel with my own journey and um there wasn't any hip hop for me either. <laughs> Back then, <laughs> we were actually you know, doing the dances, you know, at parties on the street. <laughs> That's what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, I know. So it's kind of it's, it's kind of neat to see that trajectory as well how it's so mainstream now. Mm -hmm. um, but let's let's go now to your at dance theater of Carla. And mm -hmm. what was that experience like for you? Um, wow. Yeah. That was the most transformative time in my life. Uh, I stepped into Dance State of Harlem having never really been part of a Black dance community at all. Um, and that was a change and a shift. When I stepped into that room, it was like I walked into Ballet Wakanda like, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Black Panther, but it's this whole, you know, yeah. world of Black beauty and excellence. And yeah. stepping into that studio, I realized I have never been in a space like this in my whole, wow. you know, in my whole life. And it brought such a sense of purpose and pride and uh, legacy. Virginia Johnson was still dancing at the time. She was a principal. And I learned from her. I learned from Donald Williams. I learned from uh, Indolyn Taylor and Ty Jimenez and all of these principal dancers that I looked up to. And then, of course, I trained under Arthur Mitchell. And he was very much I mean, a wow. teacher and a coach as much as he was an artistic director. Mm -hmm. So my first uh three years of my dance career was really a training ground i was performing major ballets but also i was taking daily company class with arthur mitchell and he was shaping everything uh i was just what an amazing person and man and he became a dance father to me as well as a mentor and a director mm -hmm. yeah and how and how long were you with dance theater Harlem? So all you total, said, did you you said you it was in high school. Mm -hmm. All total, I was with dance theater for four years. I was there for three years, and then I uh, learned that I had an autoimmune disorder called ankylosing spondylitis, and so that led to some injuries and illness. And so I thought I was retiring from dance. Um, it was a really tough reality to be hitting my stride, to have had this dream for such a long time. And then by the time I was in my late 20s, it all came crashing down and I had to stop. And I had 
three knee surgeries. I It took me a year to figure out my diagnosis. And then I started a round of medication and was experimenting with medication for my autoimmune disease. And I thought that that's it. That's it for me. And I, it took me about a year to figure out what am I going to do next? And I ended up uh, getting into Columbia University and I thought, well, here's the next step. I'm transitioning out of dance and moving into something else. And that's but, painful. I mean, oh you know, gosh, it's, it's, so painful. It is painful because, and I, I want to just recognize that too, because you know, looking back, right? You can, you can look back and see how far you've come. But in that moment, and I say that for dancers who are listening now too, because we go through these transitions and we think it might stop us or redirect us or be the end. Um, but to have, to hear you talk about, and you'll continue talking about how you ever overcame that and where you are now, but it doesn't have to, it might redirect us or reroute us in a roundabout way. But if you keep, if you keep going, you'll find that next, whatever yes. that next is, I think. And it still can be in dance and it may be performing. It could be in teach. It could be so many avenues. So Absolutely. I just want to point that out and, and just, uh, I mean, congratulate you for just plowing through it. So continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, when everything was happening, I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. I could not see a path forward. I could not see any of that. All I could see was just do something and don't sit here and wallow in your depression. <laughs> um, and so I was grateful to get into school and to be able to focus my mind on another way of growing. Uh, I ended up studying history at Columbia um, I really didn't know. It's a liberal arts school. I really didn't know what I should study, but I enjoyed reading and I knew I was a decent writer. So I figured I wouldn't fail. <laughs> I wouldn't flunk out. And while at school, I met a few people who were part of a praise dance ministry. It was like a social club on campus. Many of the dancers did not have professional level training or experience. But they wanted to express their thanks, their love for God through movement. And they became my best friends, my social circle. And because I didn't really have to use my legs, a lot of the choreography, choreography was gestural and it used a lot of sign language. Um, it was a way that I could re-engage with dance in the way that felt perfect for me because I've always been a very spiritual, religious person. And I've always felt yeah. <laughs> I've always felt that my dancing was part of my larger calling and purpose. So yeah, I started performing with this praise dance ministry. We would go to local churches, we would perform on campus, we would do various things. And through that, uh, in my senior year, I realized my body is feeling a little better. I'm feeling stronger. And I started taking more dance classes at Steps. I did take a couple dance classes within the dance division at Barnard. I took some choreography classes too, because I figured that's a way to be part of the dance community uh, without having to be, you know, full out with feeling with my own body. Um, but in my senior year, I started to get stronger. And then I started to take more classes and I found myself spending more time at steps and I was taking um, mostly modern dance classes because it fit with my schedule uh, in the afternoon and I realized I felt embarrassed actually to go into the professional level classes at like the 10 o'clock class say at steps and be surrounded by professional dancers that were doing this every day all day and I I was not in that type of shape and people knew me. So I, I just was like, I, I don't feel comfortable. So I started going in the afternoon when there were no professional dancers there. And I met Milton Myers, who uh, at the time was the resident teacher for the Alvin Ailey Company. And he said to me, after a couple of weeks, you keep coming to this class. And Alicia, have you ever thought about having a career as a dancer? And I was like, yeah, well... <laughs> 
I've I've done that. I got burned by it. And I, I'm working at JP Morgan now as an intern and I'm taking a full-time position. And, you know, once I graduate, my, my future is set. It doesn't involve dance, but I'll always keep dance in my life. Blah, 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 blah. I was trying to deflect. And he said, you need to meet Judith Jamison. All of that is great, but you need to meet Judith Jamison. And so through him, I ended up starting to meet Ailey family that, of course, I I knew I loved the company since I was a kid. I saw them perform since I was a kid. Um, All that to say, there's so many parts of this puzzle, but basically when I graduated, I wanted to spend the summer dancing because I knew I was going to be taking a desk job for the rest of my life. I had already signed the contract. And uh, Complexions needed someone to fill in for the summer. And it, some people had seen me at Steps and told Desmond and Dwight, Alicia's dancing. And uh, I called them to say, hey, I, I have some experience in marketing. Do you need a marketing intern for the summer? And they said, well, we heard that you're dancing and we actually need a dancer for the summer. And so I ended up going on tour with them to Italy of all places, like a summer Italy tour. And the bug just bit me so hard. I loved spending every waking moment thinking about movement. And so at the end of that summer, I'd made the decision. I really want to go back to full-time performing. I want to try. If, If my body failed me, then I have my degree. I have some other interests and talents. So why not? Like what, what could happen so badly now? And I ended up actually going back to Arthur Mitchell and saying to him, this is the company that I love. And I didn't get to finish the way that I wanted to. And can I come back? And he welcomed me back with open arms. He gave me the time. I hadn't really had my point shoes on. Uh, You know, he gave me the time and the space to, to get strong and I had the most amazing year with Dance Studio of Harlem. I thought I would be there forever. Wow. And unfortunately, after a year, the company closed due to financial, you know, reasons. And so that set again another, you know, challenge into motion. And I freelanced for a year with complexions and I filled in for an injured dancer at Alonzo King Mines wow. for a couple of performances. And then I got into Alvin Ailey, American Dance Theater. So, yeah, yeah that my, my performance life, I could not have planned it the way that it happened. But I'm so happy and fulfilled by the things that I've done in my career. Wow. I mean, it really, you know, all those, all those things, all those pieces add up to, to the present, to where you are. I, you know, I have to tell you, that um, Alvin Ailey, when I saw them perform, they're the reason I went into dance. They, uh, I saw, I was, I, you know, I came to dance late. I came to dance at 13. I wanted to, but I was too shy to tell anybody I wanted to dance. You know, mm-hmm. like I kind of hang back and that kind of thing, you know. And I started taking classes and then I was um, doing my junior year abroad. I was in mm-hmm. France and Alvin Ailey, every, anybody knew that if there was a dance company around, ask Joanne to go <laughs> because you know, I was going to go see them. And so we went and I saw, of course, and I've said this so many times on my podcast and different guests I've had on that it was that performance in France. I was 19 years old. Mm. It was a revelation. And yes. I sat there and I was like, I need to do this. This and is I it. Just knew. It just, yeah, right? And and I couldn't deny it anymore. I couldn't hide it anymore, you know? And so that changed my trajectory. So whenever I hear somebody who who has spent their part of their career with the company, I just, mm-hmm. I feel so, you know, blessed to, to hear about it because it's such, that, that company as well is just so beautiful and has paved the way for so much to the dance world. And I used to, uh, when I would be taking about, because I, I live in New Jersey, and mm-hmm. I would go in and out of the city class and follow my dance teachers around wherever they were teaching. And what they were, it was before Ailey had their school. And uh, I remember what they were rehearsing up at the city center, I think it was. And I would like sit and I'd 
edge of the door watching <laughs> and I was watching Judah the Jameson and I would just be in awe wow. just the yeah because I knew it was because of seeing them I was there so mm. it's a they, they shout out to them as well because they I think they changed so many dancers lives uh, you know yeah. we hear so many stories similar to yours similar to mine seeing the company how it changes you it changes yeah. your uh idea of the possibilities for your life uh, yeah Thank you for sharing and that so story. Then, so from um, Ailey, did, was it Juilliard next? So what happened after Ailey? No, okay. So, right. So I joined Ailey in 2005. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, by 2008, uh, my autoimmune disease flared up really badly. And I ended up having to stop and have a another knee surgery and uh you know just try to calm down the flare and uh at the time i was dating kirby mack who is now my husband who i met in college in undergraduate he was living in st louis and so when i left ailey i thought i was retiring by that time i was uh close to 30 years old if not yeah, well into my uh, my early 30s. And I was grateful. I had danced for six more years and I never thought that that was going to happen. And I moved to St. Louis to earn my master's degree in nonprofit management from Washington University. And to see about a boy, you know, to see about, it could we really work? We've been doing long distance dating while I was touring and you know, let's see where this goes. And I started teaching, uh, really just to, to make money, um, at a school called COCA center for the creative arts in St. Louis. And so in the evenings I taught middle school and high school age students. Uh, I was the jazz teacher, but it was really like Horton to pop music. <laughs> um, cause I wanted to flex my chops with what I had learned. I had also received a certificate, a teaching certificate from the Ailey School for the Horton Technique from Anna Marie Forsyth. Uh, And I was teaching ballet. And then I was um, helping to manage their pre-professional program for dancers who aspired to go into the field. And I was earning my degree and really learning about arts administration. And when I graduated with my degree, I had also been teaching some master classes at Webster University in St. Louis, and they offered me a full-time faculty position, and I couldn't turn it down. I had never thought of myself as a teacher, and then I fell in love with teaching. All the aspects of being in the studio, working with young people who are so hungry and hardworking and curious, uh, I found my niche. And I, again, I never would have predicted that I would have loved working in dance as a teacher. And, you know, surprise, (laughs) this is something that I loved. So I, I took the position and I was dancing, dancing, dancing to try to prepare my day because I did not realize how hard it is on your body to be a teacher. Oh, so I would take the class that, right. It's true. Yes, man. So I would take the class before the classes that I taught all day just to keep myself in shape so that I didn't hurt myself while teaching. And, uh, Judith Jamison was a retiring and she asked me to come back and perform in her honor at city center for her last city center season. So I came back and performed with my partner, one of my best friends, Jamar Roberts in a piece that she had choreographed called reminiscent. It was a duet from the, the, the ballet reminiscent. And yeah, when I was finished performing, I looked at my husband in tears and he was like, I know what you're about to say. And I was like, I just don't think I'm done. 
I don't think I'm done. This felt so good. My body feels good. I'm still fairly young. I think I need to try again. And Robert Battle was just stepping into the director position. And he was like sitting in the audience with me as I was watching the other shows. And he was like, you know, Alicia, <laughs> you could think about coming back like with me because I can make that decision now. Oh. And uh, yeah. oh, I couldn't be more honored. And so I was able to come back and I went back to Ailey for three more years under Robert Battle, which was a dream. The rep that he brought, the things that I was able to do, it affirmed everything. And in 2014, I finally left the company and full-time performing after a back injury. By that time, I was in my later 30s and I was like, okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. This is this is good. I'm done. And I, I moved back to St. Louis and uh almost immediately again the sky opened up for me and I got to return to Webster University. Uh and I, I taught there for three, almost four years, uh working with the college students there in higher education. I love working with college age students. Uh, and we had two children in that time as well, Jordan and Layla. And then we moved for six months to Texas for my husband's work opportunity. And I thought, this is his time now. He has made a way for me to, to do all the things that I've wanted to do. So now it's time for him to do the things that he wanted to, that he wants to do with his career. And then the job, opened up at Juilliard and I interviewed thinking this is just an exercise. This is not a job that I will mm -hmm. land. But then I got it. <laughs> and we ended up moving yes. back yeah to the East Coast. So we live here in South Orange, New Jersey actually. You mentioned that you live in New Jersey. We also live in New Jersey. And I'm in my sixth year at Juilliard. So actually, this is my 10th year working in higher education. Uh, wow. I couldn't be more happy, more proud, you know, more blessed. It's been a, an yeah. amazing journey so far. I mean, it really, I remember, I remember when you got appointed, you know, when you got the, the job, Julia, I remember what big news that was. Because at the time I had, I had a dance studio for 23 years mm -hmm. in New Jersey and, um, you know, and I, re as you're saying different dates, I'm thinking about what I was doing and where I was, <laughs> why you're you know, in different dates. And, you know, I just want to go back to the teaching aspect of things too. I, I remember, I never thought I would have a dance studio. Like I, mm. I was too. I thought I'm never going to teach dance. Like I would never teach dance. Like why would I ever teach dance? Just thinking like I, it wasn't in my wheelhouse, you know? Right. And then I got, I, I had happened to get, you know, happened to get a job teaching. It was in the summer and I too fell in love with it. And what the kids brought to it, and these were little right. ones at the time, mm -hmm. these were little, little, little ones. I thought, wow, it opened up this whole world of possibility to me. What I saw that dance was doing in these, because I had never taught that young before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Wow, and, and I still never thought I would have a studio. I just thought, well, I kind of like this teaching thing on the side, <laughs> you know. Right. And one thing led to another. Yeah, one thing led to another, and still thinking I would never have a studio. And then there I found myself having a studio, and I loved it because I wanted wanted kids to love dance and have it touch them as much as it did me, mm -hmm. you know. And and I just want. It. And it was okay to me if they didn't go on. There were kids who wanted to go on, who wanted to have a career in dance. But I heard so many stories and still hear them to this day, <laughs> how dance affects their lives. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that? Because I think that's so, so crucial to what we do as dancers and artists. Yes, absolutely. You know, not every student that I train has gone on to a career in professional as a professional dancer. But that's not really the point. You know, the point is to grow yourself, to learn yourself, to be able to see a path before you, whether that's in dance or not, 
and there are so many transferable skills that dancers gain. So, you know, you know this, but we know how to work well under pressure. We know how to multitask. Mm -hmm. We are very disciplined. Uh, We're team oriented. Everything we do is with other people. There's rarely a time where you're the only person in a room. You know, everything you do is affected by a team and how uh, important it is to learn how to collaborate. Uh, We know endurance. We know how to build stamina. Uh, We know how to present ourselves. I was just talking to my husband about this because my daughter is uh, is dancing. She's only seven years old, but it's clear she has a, a love for it and some real talent. And she did her first Nutcracker uh, with New Jersey uh, Dance Theater Ensemble that's based in Summit, New Jersey. And they performed at Montclair State. They had two sold out shows. So I think the house is probably 500 seats or more. Like it's a fairly big house. And my husband was so impressed that she could get out there and stand in front of a crowd and like hold her own. And, you know, you see that spark of something in her, even he who is not a dancer could can see it, you know? And he just said, if she never dances, the fact that she is okay to be in front of all those people, it didn't phase her at all. What that will mean if she wants to be a business person or a lawyer or a doctor, that you can stand in front of someone with posture and grace and information and hold your own. And that you feel like you've accomplished something when you've worked hard towards something. So, all those things that I see in a seven year old. I see in my students who are college students who are thinking about spending their lives as professional dancers. And that, I mean, you, you've said it so clearly, everything, you know, about dance and the transferable skills and and just what it, it enriches us so much, you know, the arts enrich us, you know, we're talking about dance because that's what we do, you know, but I, I it just is so enriching. Um, talk about, you know, what being at Juilliard, Hmm. you know, has been like for you and what, you know, like why Juilliard and what you hope to, to continue to bring there. Cause what Hmm. you said, six years or seven years. Is this six? This is my sixth year. I'm in it now. (laughs) Yeah. So what is your mission? You know, what is your personal, personal mission for Juilliard? Ah, You know, I'm really lucky because I feel like Juilliard is a place where I can bring my personal mission and vision for what I hope to do for the dance world. And it is aligned with the goals and the mission of the school. And so I'm very lucky to be able to step into a space in the middle of New York City, the dance mecca of our world that values creativity, innovation, excellence, diversity, inclusion, belonging. All of these things are what is what I think create a strong, impressive, young leader in the field. And so what I hope to do at Juilliard is to inspire the dancer's curiosity to want to continue to learn more, to be a sponge throughout their lives, not even, you know, their early careers, to be as diverse in their skill set as possible. So we concentrate on ballet and modern techniques, but also their learning. More contemporary techniques now with gaga and floor work. And I want them to be able to be a strong collaborator in the room, They are learning choreography for two years with the ability to study choreography for four years if they choose to. They're learning anatomy. They're learning all of these subjects, which I have to say, they were already uh, in place when I arrived. The school, I'm standing on the shoulders of so many people who've created a strong foundation for the school. Personally, what I hope to bring is some of the things that we've talked about already, the spirit of what it means to be an artist. What is your responsibility as an artist to the world? 
joy. It is a hard profession, but let's recognize that we're doing something that so few people get to do, which is to concentrate all day on yourself, (laughs) your own talent and how you can, you know, make a spark with other people in the room and for an audience. And I really hope to engender a sense of leadership with the students that they don't only see themselves as a dancer, but as a, a future choreographer, a director, an arts administrator, a teacher, and they see themselves as multi hyphenated individuals with many, many gifts and talents. That's a great goal. And I, I think they're, they're in place and it's happening just from what I'm seeing and what I'm reading and what's put out there, you know, in the news and on social media. You know, it really, uh, I, I think during COVID and COVID and, and where we are now, you know, so many, so many balls got thrown and tossed up into the air, right? Yep. Juggled. And now like, you're seeing this beautiful, just this beautiful unfolding. Mm. Uh, at least that's what I see. And I see that. I can yeah, see that. You know, and I, and I feel that all these conversations I'm getting to have, you know, I can, I can talk about dance forever, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you want to talk about it, you want to move, you want to do all that. But, but these conversations that I've been having, with all the different artists I've had on in all different ways they're in the dance field, whether they're a photographer, a choreographer, you know, a seamstress, you name it, whatever they're doing, you know, that passion and that love and, and the joy, like you say, and also, I find, and I don't, I don't know if you have, but I find that people I speak with, they really want to touch lives, mm. you know, and whether it's a small way, big way, and maybe that's what you're talking about when you're talking about that collab, collaboration and yes. all that. It's really, and that spark, you know, the way you say it is so, it's really enticing. I want to hear more. <laughs> I want to hear more because I, I like you say, I think I find artists are so generous in because they pour out from the depths of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really find that so many they really pour out because they want the world to be a really good place. They want to leave it in a good place. They want to affect change in a positive way. And I think that's what artists do. Can you can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. At Juilliard we talk a lot about this idea of it, the um citizen artist, meaning that we are artists not for ourselves, but that the responsibility is to affect the world at large. What would our world be without movement and music and visual art and culture? And who we are as a people, you know, we can talk about just American culture in general, is so guided by how we literally move through our world. And dance has so much to do with that. I I think we don't always, dancers give ourselves enough credit. When you watch a movie that you love or you go to a Broadway show, there's so much movement involved, even if it's not like a dance specific show. There's so much choreography (laughs) that uh, I think we don't even give ourselves enough props about how dance lifts everything around us. But the responsibility, if we can see ourselves as responsible to something larger than ourselves, it helps to keep us moving through the world in a positive way. And that sends rings of positive change you know throughout time and throughout generations because I'm still thinking about the first time I saw Ailey you spoke about the first time you saw Ailey and you know how that's inspired your entire journey it's amazing yeah no it really is thank you it's and I say it and I I talk about it because they do like you saying you're saying the responsibility of an artist it, there is responsibility there and and i think it keeps us grounded too when we believe that we have 
a responsibility. It's something outside of ourselves, something mm-hmm. bigger. It's art is always bigger than we are. It starts, right. you know, that little spark starts somewhere and then it, we're the vessel. I always say we're the vessel of what's ever happening, you know, and, and then it's finding, I think, your voice and the truth to who you are, you yeah. know, and being able also to to journey on another path of someone's choreography, mm-hmm. um, be able to empty yourself to serve that choreography, to serve that piece of artwork, but at the same time being being true to who you are as an artist. I think that's, Absolutely. that's artistry, right? Mm-hmm. That's that artistry. is artistry. Um, yeah, it's fa- it's fascinating. I could go on forever <laughs> about that <laughs> stuff. But let's talk about let's talk about the Dance Magazine Award. So congratulations! So oh my gosh, got the Magazine Award for twenty twenty three, correct? Yes. And that happened like what was it? December third. December fourth. December fourth. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. December fourth. So let's talk about that. Tell tell <sighs> the listeners what that award was for and what it was. I think they have a the theme now, right? Yes. The theme was uh, that's right. Yes, mm-hmm. this year's theme for the Dance Magazine Awards was excellence in dance education. I received an email from the editor in chief of Dance Media stating, "Congratulations, you are a recipient of this award." And I was so floored <laughs> because I, you know, I've read Dance Magazine, we all have. We right. we mm-hmm. had we were of the age of receiving that magazine in the mail or like finding it somewhere at your dance studio and just mm-hmm. pouring over the pictures and the articles because that's all we had. We didn't have social media at you know when when we were younger and you know I think for our world the Dance Magazine Awards is essentially like the Hall of Fame of the dance world. And I looked back and I saw that uh, somewhere in the mid seventies, I think it was 1975, but I could be wrong that Alvin Ailey and Arthur Mitchell received the award in the same year. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, and there you are, right? yeah. Oh my gosh. But I think this for me was even more special because it recognized not only my time as a dancer, but now in this second phase of my life as a, as an educator. And that has so much more, well, I wouldn't say more sphere of influence, but it's meaningful for me uh, personally, because it's not really about, it's not about my work. It's actually about the success of my students. Because if they weren't uh, seeing success, if they weren't able to kind of take on whatever they've learned and brought it into their careers, I I wouldn't have anything to <laughs> to uh, to lean on. And so I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful to have had the trajectory that I've had, and to have had the the influence on young people. Uh, you know, it's it's all it's all a blessing. You know, what a way to to wrap up 2023, right? You know, Ooh. what a way to just like cap it. <laughs> right? yeah. That's just amazing. Miss Jameson oh. actually gave the uh, the award on my behalf, so oh. I was sitting with her. She was to my right. My husband was to my left. It's just the moment. I was just trying to take it all in. That's amazing. And my family behind me, it was like, forget it. And, this and is I, the moment. Moments like that, I'm always like, it, it, it's always so surreal because it's like a moment in history. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an actual moment in history, in dance history. And then you're putting your footprint there. It's there. Your, your imprint. Uh, <laughs> your yeah. Footprint, your, fingerprint, your imprint is there in the dance world. So congratulations. It's really a, a wonderful achievement. Yeah. yeah, I want to talk about before you finish up your podcast, Moving ah, Moments. Let's yes, talk about that. So, so, um, yeah, tell everybody about your podcast. Great, uh, I'm happy to. 
uh, I started Moving Moments with uh, our my co-producer, uh, Artful Narratives Media, um, really run by a woman named Jessica Handelman. I met Jessica because I was a guest on another podcast that she co-produces called Speaking Soundly. Uh, Speaking Soundly is all about uh, leaders in the classical music and jazz music oh. field. And the host is David Krause, who is at the Met, but also yes. on faculty at Juilliard. And so he interviewed me uh, as a musical artist, as we all are as dancers. And we had such a fantastic conversation that uh, Artful Narratives Media said to me, you know, you might consider having a podcast of your own. And I was like, you know what? I have conversations with some amazing groundbreaking artists all the time because of my position at Juilliard. Um, being able to have coffee with Justin Peck or my relationship with Miss Jamison or, you know, being across campus from Wendy Whalen, who I've had a wonderful working relationship with as a dancer, you know, throughout my career. Uh, working with Kyle Abraham first as a dancer with Alvin Ailey when he came to choreograph and then just having him as a colleague and a friend. Jamar Roberts, who, as I said, is one of my closest friends and dance partners and now is making huge waves as a choreographer. All of these people are our are, are dance world. They make up uh, who we are. And also, they have such incredible stories about how they began, what their moving moments were that kept them inspired. And so I thought, I already have the conversations. I, I know I already have it all planned out in my head. I just didn't realize I had a platform to be able to share these stories. And so I'm so grateful to Artful Narratives Media for encouraging me to start this podcast and supporting the podcast. I've now published uh, two seasons. I'm working on a third. It's taken a little while longer than I thought this time around. I'm quite busy. Uh, it takes a lot of time and dedication. I want to do it well. So I'm taking a little hiatus so I can concentrate on uh, what the third season will look like. Yeah. And I, I hope to continue to share people's stories, to inspire people as they listen, both dancers and non-dancers, and to be able to get a little bit more granular about the lives of the people that we all look up to. Yeah. Can you leave us with what your moving moment or moments might be? Uh, there are too many. I, I, I'm talking, so uh, <laughs> most of my guests say that too. There's so many, but you know, I will never forget the first time I met Arthur Mitchell coming in to take company class and what that was like, you know, just for the chance to be seen, just like, chance yes, come and take class. Woo. Uh, I remember performing in my first uh, season with Dance State of Harlem. We were doing a European summer festival tour. We were performing Serenade and we were dancing outside in the, uh, in the, in the, um, the Herodicus Atticus Theater in Greece. Oh my God. <laughs> like in the most, the oldest, yeah. most famous <laughs> theater in, in history. And I remember, you know, you start with your hand, your right hand up looking up. And there was the Parthenon lit and a full moon. And then this oh, music God. and this mu this movement. And I was like, you must remember this moment because this is everything that you worked for. Wow. Um, and I've had moments like that with Ailey. You know, the first time performing Revelations was like, wow. Uh, first time I did a Ron Brown piece, I remember I had an out-of-body experience and I thought, this is it. This is what you do this for. This is it. Uh, you know, seeing the dancers performing at Juilliard, 
I'm the first to stand up. I'm the first to give a standing ovation because I know what they've put into, you know, the effort that they've put into a performance and what they hope to do and what inevitably they they do as mm-hmm. as artists. You know, there's so many, there's so, so, so many, many moments. You had such, you ha- have had and are having such a rich, rich career. It's really wonderful. Um, and I thank you so much for taking the time to come on Dance Talk because it's, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you. I've, I've, you know, followed your career along the way. So I was delighted that you were able to come on and we were able to talk about this. Um, and so much, so, so much. I, I really wish you so much good fortune, continued good fortune, Alicia. It's <laughs> thank been wonderful you. to to talk with you you know maybe i'll run into you as i'm running across you know that campus over there because that's I'm right there on uh-huh. people and, yeah so uh, but i really do thank you thank you so much is there anything you know we've said so much and you've offered so much um is there anything that you'd like to leave the listeners with no oh, i just said this this journey has been so interesting and fulfilling and challenging thus far and I'm excited to see, you know, how it continues to unfold. But I'm so grateful to have these types of conversations because we don't often have times to reflect and being in conversation. And uh, it, it does it does offer that time to pause and think about like, wow, you've come so far. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for this moment. I, I really appreciate it. And it's been yeah. beautiful speaking with you and hearing about your journey and your stories and congratulations on such a successful podcast. Uh, Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for listening. This is Dance Talk with Joanne Carey. Follow us, like us and share, share, share. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Powered by Riverside. 